Greetings family, uh, this is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to the Journey of a Lifetime Tours to Africa. I'm your tour organizer and your tour leader, taking you on the Journey of a Lifetime to our upcoming tour to Ghana, November 16th to the 26th, 2018. Ghana, May 22nd to June 4th, 2019. And South Africa with an optional Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana for November 22nd to December 4th of 2019. So family, those are the three journeys we have. And what we're going to talk about today is the itinerary for our upcoming journey that we're leaving for Ghana, November 2018, and also uh, our South Africa journey. And our May Ghana journey is similar to the November journey with the exception of um, a few more days in May. So what we like to do um, when we do, uh, do these journeys is to make sure that uh, everybody have clear information. Now all the details for our tours are on our website at africaforthafricans.org. Alright and before I uh, go into the uh, first uh, itinerary which will be the South Africa Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana in November 2018. I'm going to go into an introduction about uh, myself and also about our business enterprise, Africa for the African Tours and Investments. All right, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica in October of 1977. I moved to Brooklyn, New York with my family in December 1988. Uh, while in uh, New York City, I went to Transit Tech High School where I studied electrical installation and practice and that's where I got into my world of um, technology electrical electronic systems I also ran track and field and played soccer for four years once I finished high school um, I made a decisive decision to build my career and take it to another level I joined the United States uh, Navy and I got a position as an aircraft technician uh, which also connected me with my background in electrical and electronic systems and after I got out I uh, got my certification as an airframes and power plants aircraft technician and I was able to get a position at a Delta airline company working as an aircraft technician along the road of this uh, being here in the Atlanta area and working as an aircraft technician I acquired my uh, FCC my general radio telephone license which is like an electronic technician certification and on top of that, I started working in my world of uh, information system technology. I got the certifications in A+, Net+, and Security+, IT technician. And that also uh, was a part of my growth uh, uh, in my business enterprise, Bomani Technology, which I started before I got those certifications and started at around uh, early 2005. Uh, so it's um, the first business I built based on my technical skills and doing uh, technical work for people, mainly uh, computer related. Right, and uh, that is an energy that, um, that I use together with my current business, Africa for the Africans, towards an investment, where I use all the technical skills to build a technical office and also run websites and manage the uh, operation uh, using you know, advanced technology, a lot of computers, a lot of uh, storage, a lot of power. All right, and that's uh, you know, a brief energy about uh, uh, Bomani technology. Now, I just want to give a quick introduction about uh, Africa tours. Now, I started uh, traveling to Africa. The first journeys I took was to Senegal in March of 2004. Then I went to Egypt April of 2004 on a journey led by Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Senegal and South Africa went another journey in May of 2005 then Senegal South Africa and Kenya in November 2005 the Gambia May 2006 so these sparked the initial five journeys that I went to Africa uh, to this seek out my roots culture learn about uh, traveling and it just brought me into a world of this starting the business that we have today which is uh, Africa for Africans tourism investment which just started October of 2006 and the first journey I started 
it was uh, December 2006 and it was eight of us and from there on we had um, the second largest journey which was uh, October 2007 uh, 42 of us then this kind of started doing annual October journeys all the way up to uh, October 2016 so in between that time October 2008 October 2009 which we also went to Togo and Benin then July and October of uh, 2011, October 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. And then after that time frame, I started evolution of just doing the two tours per year, which is every May and November, or mainly every May, and reserving November for other countries. So in 2017, did a Ghana tour for uh, May and also one for November including Togo and Benin of uh, 2017 and uh, 2018 we had the same setup uh, just Ghana in May and Ghana in November and 2019 looking to the epic journey another Ghana journey in May 2019 then South Africa Zambia, Zimbabwe and Botswana in November 2019 so those are the, the flow of the journeys of the past um, present and future and uh, all these details can be found on our website at Africa for the Africans .org. once you go to the main menu of the website you'll see the list of all the current tours and you'll see once you click on the links you'll see the full details of all the tours as we're gonna go into the South Africa journey um, and go through that full itinerary All right, so uh, let me go to uh, our website. So I'm on AfricaForAfricans.org, and once you get to the website, you'll see the uh, MP3 player to the left, um, and um, there's a list of um, cultural music. I call it the Love and Revolution MP3 mix. Uh, so um, once you go to the right side, you'll see a the right side. You'll see a big slideshow of. Um, photos from this um, years of my travel from 2004 to 2016 and it just shows you just all the different uh, countries and just the energy of this the, the beauty of this uh, you know, that cultural journey um, so family I'm on the main menu and I'm clicking on the South Africa Zambia Botswana and Zimbabwe tour in November 2019 link and once I click on the tour link, uh, there's a list of articles and these are all the clarity for your tour preparation. The tour overview which gives the price and the uh, what's included, what's not included, and the list of things that's uh, included in the different parts and the different countries that we're going to. The general terms uh, give you just the, the, the need to know as far as um, price, details, uh, important things. Uh, the responsibility of different uh, people that's a part of their journey and so on and the responsibility of the uh, tour participant and and all the general terms you can uh, think of so it is a long list of information but it's uh, just for everyone's uh, clarity uh, next is the uh, itinerary which we're going to go through so I'm going to click on the itinerary all right so day one Friday November 22nd, depart Atlanta to Johannesburg. Now, for those who are not coming from Atlanta, what we have set up is that we'll have you, we'll get your connection flight and work it in the group booking. So your flight will just connect to Atlanta, you meet with us, and then we'll all leave together. So the meet and greet is at 4 p.m. at departure gate at Delta International Terminal at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta Airport in Georgia. Flight departs at 6.15 p.m. on Delta Airlines flight number DL-200 to Johannesburg, South Africa. Day 2, Saturday, November 23rd. Welcome to Johannesburg. Right? So Delta flight DL-200 arrive at 3.35 p.m. in Johannesburg, South Africa. We do a short tour and orientation on the way to the hotel for check-in. 7 p.m. we'll have dinner and various nightlife option. And we'll overnight at the uh, Portia Hotel, Johannesburg. Day 3, Sunday, November 24th, Johannesburg Tour. Lesedi, 
cultural village. Wake up call, morning exercise and breakfast, 8 a.m. leave hotel for Johannesburg city tour, including apartheid museum, which is the architectural, interesting and packed with thoughtful, open, brutal reminders of South Africa history. Later experience, La Sedi cultural village based in the cradle of humankind was created to showcase the diversity of African cultures, particular of the dominant groups found in South Africa, Zulu, Hausa, Bosoto, Ndebele, and Pedi. Guests will welcome with traditional African singing before being escorted for a wonder through the Nabeli styled village and craft market. Guests will be oriented by watching a multi visual theater presentation on the history and origin of South African people. Then, guests will be taken on a tour of the five homestead, each representing a particular cultural choice of housing, material, decorative detail, and way of living. End off with a boma dinner with a menu offering African specialty dishes. And then we'll overnight at Potia Hotel, Johannesburg. Day 4, Monday, November 25th, a full tour of Soweto. Wake up call, morning exercise and breakfast. 8 a.m. leave hotel to meet your local tour guide and embark on a full day Soweto tour. A first stop, Mandela House in Orlando, West Soweto which is a national monument dedicated to the offering insight into the life of Nelson Mandela and the families that, that lived with him from 1946 to the 1990s, managed by Soweto Heritage Trust. The house has been fully renovated and hosts a visitor center, as well as excellent multimedia and audio visual display outlining the history of the Mandela family. A meaningful experience, uh, visitors are exposed to Mandela personal life on this visit. Next stop, uh, visit Hector Peterson Memorial and Museum. On the 16th of June 1976, Hector Peterson was shot by police during a protest by school children about Afrikaans being imposed as the medium of instruction. The Soweto uprising, as it has come to known, saw 20 children shot by police doing what started out as a peaceful protest. One of the pivotal moments in the anti-apartheid struggle, 12-year-old Hector has come to symbolize those that stood against the tyrannical regime today. The 16th of June is celebrated in South Africa as National Youth Day in remembrance of those who lost their lives during the protest. The site where Hector was shot is not far from the memorial. The last stop we have Constitution Hill, which has been the site for South Africa Constitution Court since the mid-1990s, but previously it was one of the country's most notorious prisons. The old fort was built in 1892 and originally functioned as a prison and detention center for those awaiting trial. The tour of the facility will take in the isolation cells known as sections four and five, where famous political activists such as Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Wata Sesulu were held. The women's jail that has housed Winnie Mandela and other and many other cells, as well as the awaiting trial building prisoners at this facility as included British soldiers, traitors, hardened criminals, activists, and many normal South Africans who contravened the harsh apartheid laws. 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlife options overnight at Potia Hotel Johannesburg. All right, so that uh, is the end of the Johannesburg part. Now, day 5, Tuesday, November 26, Johannesburg to Cape Town. Wake up call, morning exercise and breakfast. 7 a.m. check out of hotel for flight to Cape Town. Flight departs Johannesburg, South Africa at 10.10 a.m. on South African Airways. Flight number 
SA-323 and arrive at Cape Town International Airport at 12.05 p.m. Transfer to hotel for brief orientation, 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlife options. Overnight at Portia Hotel, Cape Town. And uh, while we're there, um, there's a beautiful uh, waterfront uh, right there in Cape Town. So that's um, another location that uh, we don't specifically show on itinerary. But that's our main location there in uh, Cape Town. Uh, day 6, Wednesday, November 27th. Cape Town, Robin Island, Township Tour. 8 a.m. Leave hotel for full day guided tour of Cape Town and uh, Robin Island. Visit District 6 Museum and learn about apartheid history. Travel to nearby township including Langa and others and meet their inhabitants. Take a ferry to UNESCO listed Robin Island for a tour of the former prison for political prisoners. This is where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years in prison. 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlife options overnight at Protea Hotel, Cape Town. Day 7, Thursday, November 28, Cape Town, City Tour and Table Mountain. 8 a.m. Uh, leave hotel for full guided tour including the superb view of Cape Town from the top of Table Mountain. Enjoy panoramic sight over the city from top of Table Mountain. Visit Cape Town Malay quarters and learn about the neighborhood. Fascinating history. Check out the Castle of Good Hope and Mill Nurton Lighthouse. Tour the Cape Town Diamond Works and see South Africa jewelry at its finest. 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlife options. Overnight at Portia Hotel, Cape Town. Day 8, Friday, November 29, Cape Town to Victoria Falls, Zambia via Johannesburg. Right, so it's a 5 a.m. check out of hotel for departure for Cape Town, flight to Livingstone, Zambia via Johannesburg. Flight departs Cape Town, South Africa at 7 a.m. on South African Airways flight number SA306 and arrive at Johannesburg International Airport at 8.55 a.m. We then depart Johannesburg at 10.40 a.m. on flight number SA48 to Livingstone, Zambia and arrive at 12.20 p.m. Check-in and orientation upon arrival. Overnight at Portia Hotel, Livingstone. Now, if anyone is going back to the U.S. and they're not doing the optional tour with us, uh, once you get to Johannesburg, then you'll depart directly on Delta Airlines back to Atlanta and then connect into your connecting city if Atlanta is not your final destination. Alright, so uh, family, what I want to do is just uh, stop uh, for a minute or two and open things up for questions on the, the Johannesburg and Cape Town part of the itinerary before we get into um, what we're doing an optional journey. All right, uh, since uh, no one have any questions, we'll continue. Day 9, Saturday, November 30th. Zambia, Mosi, O, Atunya, a.k.a. Victoria Falls Tour. Wake up call, morning exercise and breakfast. 8 a.m., leave hotel for full day guided tour to Mosi, Oyatunya, or the smoke that thunders. Victoria Falls and Victoria Bridge. In modern terms, uh, Victoria Falls is known as the greatest curtain of fallen water in the world. Afternoon at leisure to explore the Mokuni village that's been transformed by explorers, hunters and missionaries. A mere stroll through the village will give you a sense of the African cultures. 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlight options. Overnight at Potia Hotel, Livingstone. Day 10 Sunday, December 1st, Botswana Safari Tour of Chobe National Park. 8 a.m. Uh, leave hotel for full day guided tour of Chobe National Park. Uh, the tours start with a transfer to Kazungula border, 
cross Zambezi River to Botswana using a speedboat, jump on safari vehicle to Chobe National Park. The day will include a boat cruise on Chobe River lunch and a 4x4 game drive to Chobe National Park. On Botswana, far northern border lies the Kwando, Linyanti, and Chobe River system, forming a series of lakes, islands, and flood plains. This area forms the Chobe National Park, famous for its large buffaloes and elephant herds. In addition to a variety of predators, there is an abundance of wild game and bird life which decorate these beautiful waterways. Enjoy a full day safari in the Chobe National Park. After the full game view, you will transfer back from Botswana back to Livingstone in Zambia. 7 p.m. dinner and various nightlife options overnight at Portia Hotel Livingstone. Day 11, Monday, December 2nd, Zimbabwe Historical and Cultural Tour. Leave hotel for a half day guided tour of border town Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe. Learn about the history and culture of the people of Zimbabwe. Return to Zambia in the afternoon for final shopping at Maramba Market, which is the biggest market in Livingstone. It sells everything from vegetables and cooking pots and handcrafts and colorful fabrics. Uh, dinner and various nightlife options are later and overnight at Portia Hotel Livingstone. Day 12, Tuesday, December 3rd, Victoria Falls, Zambia to Atlanta. So 10 a.m. we're going to check out of a hotel and depart for Livingstone Airport for flight to Atlanta via Johannesburg. Flight depart Livingstone at 1 p.m. on South African Airways flight SA-48 and arrive at Johannesburg International Airport at 2.40 p.m. Depart for Atlanta at 8.55 p.m. on Delta Flight. 2001 and day 13 you arrive at 6 45 a.m in atlanta and that is the end of the tour so family that's the uh, full uh, itinerary and once again you can go to the website africa for the africans .org, click on the south africa and zambia link and that will give you a list of a few articles and then you'll see the itinerary Click on it and look through it for word for word. And if you have any questions, you can always just uh, send me an email or just reach out to me. Uh, the goal is just to get everybody to be clear on all of the itineraries that we do for all of the tours because it defines the tour and it's the most important thing. And it gives clarity of the schedule and the day to day. That's why we do our best to put times, dates, flight information as best as possible. So family, uh, before we move on to um, the uh, Ghana Journey of a Lifetime itinerary, I want to find out if anybody have any questions. Alright, uh, so family, since uh, nobody have any questions, I uh, will uh, continue. And uh, once we um, get towards the end, have any questions by then, the best thing I recommend is write it down and then we'll just answer all of them at the end. So alright, uh, family, uh, we'll continue and then we'll go through the full itinerary of our Ghana schedule coming up. That way everybody could be clear on what we're doing that's coming up and just give you the best flow of just going to it as we'll break it down because the goal is to do everything based on the schedule now the itinerary for may 2019 is similar uh, with the exception of uh, what, what we have um, in may is two days in takarati and then an extra day in accra which we go to prom prom and visit the ancestral memorial wall so those are literally the only three days that are not featured on the November tour. Tour link uh, for Ghana to November 2018. And for everyone that's traveling with us the next 12 days, um, this is all information as far as the confirmed tour itinerary and details. And what I've done is I've completed the latest version of our tour book. If you look to the left side of the page, on the main menu, it will say Ghana tour books. And once you click on it, you'll see a tour book for this current uh, Ghana November journey. And that's the actual book that we have been sent out for printing. The t-shirts are already here. The pens and the bags are on the way. So uh, we'll have everything set up to get everybody their package and be prepared for the journey. 
But the main thing about the tour book is it has what I'm going to go to, the quote-unquote uh, finalized itinerary. And it's what we're going to use as a schedule for all parties, including the Sun Seekers Tours, which is providing the tour guide and the bus and driver, uh, can be clear on the same schedule with myself and anybody else. You know, we want everyone to bring their tour book because we're going to be going to different aspects of the schedule and different things that's in the book. It's just a full program itself, including lots of uh, investments and repatriation information. All right, so I'm clicking on the article, Ghana Tour, itinerary, November 16th to the 26th, 2018. Uh, day one, Friday, November 16th, depart Atlanta to Accra via Amsterdam. Uh, so we're going to meet and greet at 6 p.m. at departure gate at Delta International Terminal at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta Airport in Georgia. Flight departs at 8:13. So the same thing. Um, those who are traveling on this segment uh, with us uh, will meet two hours before. There's another um, group of people that are leaving from Atlanta that flight leaves uh, two hours later. Uh, so, and then other people that are flying from other places. The main thing is. Everyone connects to Amsterdam. So we leave at 8.13 p.m. and we get to Amsterdam November 17, 10.45 a.m. Uh, day two, Saturday, November 17th. Uh, meet and greet 12.30 p.m. at KLM Ghana Departure Gate at Amsterdam Airport. Flight departs at 2.25 p.m. Uh, KLM flight number 589. And we'll get to Ghana at 7.55. So uh, the, most of us are going to have uh, long layovers that day. Some are going to have a little shorter layover. But my goal is to make sure we connect with everyone, give everybody their supplies, and do our best to check off tips there. And then when we get to Ghana, the same thing with supplies. So we do our best to just get a few things out of the way. That way we don't have to do it um, when we get to Ghana. And once we uh, get to Ghana, our, our tour guide will meet us either in baggage claim or he meet us right at the front of the uh, airport exit. And then we'll just walk and escort everybody, everybody to the bus. So by then, everyone will have their bags on their cart, and everything will be organized as uh, we talked about the sequence of uh, proceeding uh, through password control, making sure you have your bags, making sure you have a tag for your bags or your baggage receipt. Uh, that way, if it's checked at the front, you will have all those things organized. So um, we'll do our best to go through this. Uh, once we're on the flight, everything is like a move, and it's uh, 40 of us. So everybody do their best to just keep pace of what we talk about, especially when we meet up and talk about meeting, uh, moving with a certain segment. But uh, the goal literally is this. You know, just all of us are in the same cabin, but we will get split up. But uh, once we're in baggage claim, we'll make sure we're count for everybody and account for every bag before we proceed. Right. So this night is a short night. Once we check into the Micklin Hotel, our goal is to just get a set for everybody to just enjoy their rest. And for those who want to go out with us, we're doing social uh, nightlife gathering at Shades of Freak Restaurant in the neighborhood. Um, it's an incredible night uh, scene, and it's not something that we're going to go out for a long time. It's just to uh, get people out and socialize. Uh, uh, day three, Sunday, November 18th, um, and we're going to go up to uh, the mountains, which is uh, the two main part of the mountains, Avery and Tutu. And so go set to leave a uh, hotel at, uh, it said it's say 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. on the uh, schedule. But that's, what, that's the time that we want everyone to be ready. And we're looking to leave at about 8.30. So by that time, we're just proceeding. And for those who can't make it or don't feel like getting up and so on, that's fine. Uh, we'll be back in the evening. It's one of those things where... We don't force anyone to to get up and come with us on, on days out. Um, people may feel different ways. But we do want everyone to experience a full schedule uh, as you can. So once uh, we take that 45-minute drive to the mountains, uh, our first stop is at, in Avery. Uh, we're going to stop by um, or just maybe just uh, get off the bus for a little bit or just show you from outside the window. It's our Rita Marley uh, Foundation, and the studio is still burnt down so but you'll see you, you, you you'll, you'll see the aspect where we'll go up to the mountains Rita Molly um Bob Molly's our wife has been a great uh, energy there in Ghana and you know just want to show people aspects of energy from those of us from the African dance and the things that we're doing there uh, in Ghana okay. so we're going to drive up to our, uh, our main visit which is our Trinity Home Foundation so this is where we donate uh, school supplies 
financial donations uh, to the students and the orphanage, orphans uh, there. And uh, this is um, a place I've been going to since uh, 2007. And the elder name is uh, Mama Sophia, and she has just been an incredible person as far as just trying to help the children who don't don't have homes. And it's it's a presentation that we have had more than others. Uh, but when you get up to, when you get up there, it's about a mile hike. Uh, it's just an incredible property, and they're looking to just build it as a as a best foundation as possible to help the young uh, students who don't have homes or don't have access to education or access to a family. So once uh, we're finished there, we're going to head down to the wood, wood carving village, the botanic garden, and also we're going to go to the um, University of Ghana just so everyone can kind of see the main uh, university campus there in Ghana. And as we'll do, you know, the same when we get to Kumasi and Cape Coast. Now this would be the first night we're having dinner and we're set to have dinner uh, in the neighborhood um, at uh, Jamrock Restaurant. It's an incredible Ghanaian slash uh, Jamaican buffet. And the rest of the nights we're scheduled to uh, eat at, um, at the hotel based on everyone's uh, diet and it's just a nice uh, cultural buffet. It ends up being just a lot more convenient at the hotel unless we find like restaurants like uh, the Jamrock that's in the actual neighborhood uh, where we can take the bus out and maybe you know don't throw the tour guide and the driver off much to where because once they go out with us they're burned out and they have to get back up and you know go out with us you know first thing in the morning so that's the reason why you know meals are set for, at the hotel those are interested in socializing and I'm going to talk about it's nothing heavy just nice social nightlife now day four um, Monday November 19 now this is a long day we have green and black uh, Africa for Africans t-shirts what we have a set is for, you know, if I want to dress in you know, their T-shirt, and this is a reconnection to independence of 1957, uh, the Pan-African movement, energy of our ancestors. So 8 a.m., um, we'll get everybody organized and depart about uh, 8.30 for our cross-city tour, including Kwame Nkuma Memorial Park, the Culture Center, Independence Square, George Padmore Library, and W.E.B. Du Bois uh, Center. And at uh, 5.30, um, we're set for uh, dinner. Then 6.30 to 8.30, Repatriation Investment Conference with, with Africans born in the diaspora and local business people. Social gathering for nightlife. It will be right downstairs below the conference room at the Micklin uh, Hotel Outside Restaurant. Uh, so you'll be able to just enjoy the scenery, great music, and networking. So once we finish our uh, conference, it just gives us more time to socialize, especially if you have a presenter or other people that you're interested in really connecting with. I don't want this to feel like a rush moment. I want to just have that time. So that Monday schedule works out uh, real good. And then the next day, um, we're literally going to leave Accra. So that is the three-day sequence, the first day travel day, and then two tour days, uh, the same as I said for the uh, South Africa tour. And I give you time to where you can get to the city, enjoy it for you know, enjoy it for a few days, without having to do one of those itineraries where you get to you know, get somewhere one day and then you have to leave the next day. And just a lot of unnecessary move around. The itinerary is set for three days Accra, three days Kumasi, three days Cape Coast. All right, so family, that's the first three days in Accra. And what I want to do is just open things up for questions, and then do, do the other uh, segment, and then some more questions, and do the next one, and then final questions. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the line open until someone has questions. Uh, we're leaving 12 days uh, from now, heading to Ghana, and I'm looking to use this time to talk mainly with the people that are leaving in November with me for questions. Uh, that way we can you know, go through a few things for the record. So family, right now we're going to the itinerary, and we have completed up to day four. Did you say you were taking All right, uh, can you repeat the question? I said you are taking questions now, correct? Uh, yes, the line is open at the press. Yes, the line is open. Um, is there anyone or do you know if you can get a waiver for the um, yellow fever shot? Yes, you have to speak directly to your doctor or natural health practitioner, and you have to explain the situation and... They they can write it for you. 
Madassa. That's family, so the line is open. And just give your name, where you're calling from, and uh, what journey you're taking, and then uh, your questions. Balani. Uh, God, uh, give your name, where you're calling from. Uh, it's Horace from, um, I guess, Toronto, Canada, the closest uh, known city to me. Uh, God, is your question? Uh, my question is... Um, the type of uh, power plug, like the socket that's used in Ghana, like is it Type G or Type D? No, for like the the power adapters that's used. Yeah, the best thing I can explain to you, it's the it's the, it's the British system. Okay, so the UK, like the UK um, socket. Yes, exactly. Um, but um, what we recommend is just get universal, a universal setup of universal extension cords, um, universal adapters. That way, whether you go to Ghana, Brazil, South Africa, uh, Tanzania, wherever, you'll fit the different plugs. And in, but in general, yes, the uh, UK socket uh, is um, the setup that you need to use. Okay, no problem. Thanks. All right, you're welcome. And everyone, travel with me. Uh, have a we have a nice uh, departure and reminder list. On the uh, tour page of, um, of both uh, Ghana tours, we have that de detailed preparation departure list we went through last conference call, and that's where uh, Horace uh, saw the information about the um, about the plug and the adapter. And our goal is always to put as much as possible on those lists. Um, as you know, as when, when I travel and even when I get back, I, sometimes I've modified, and it's just all in essence of just getting you prepared. All right. Uh, so family, we're open for questions. We just talked about the first three days in Accra, the full schedule, and also talked about South Africa and Zambia journey. Does anyone have any questions in reference to any of those part of the itinerary? Let me know. All right, greetings, family. I'm back on the Ghana November uh, tour itinerary for 2018. So let me go. To, let me continue where we left off at. Uh, day five, Tuesday, November 20th, Accra to Kumasi. So 9 a.m. we'll check out of Micklin Hotel for a five-hour drive to Kumasi. Now the, the setup that we have is uh, 7 o'clock in the morning where we go around and collect your big bags so we can get them loaded on the bus first. And then, um, now so the main thing that we need is this, you have your big bags inside the door. When we come to do a knock on it, we'll come in and I get it. That's myself and my, my staff and just the hotel crew. <clears throat> So all these things, as we, you know, all these things, like when we're leaving from one location to the next, uh, we'll have just an in-depth uh, explanation the night before on the bus or the evening before on the bus, because uh, the best time for us to talk to everybody and explain everything to everybody is when we, you know, between the time when we get on the bus and get off the bus. After that, uh, it's up to everyone to be clear on what we talked about. And the main thing is once you read that itinerary, you're automatically clear on everything because everything is based on the actual itinerary. And then myself and my two tour assistants and just anyone that's part of our staff and crew, uh, you can always reach out, uh, especially if you have a question that you need to pass along to me while we're there. While I'm there, I want to make sure that we communicate as best as possible and not wait till a month when we come back to talk about something that we need to talk about, like day one or two. All right, so once we uh, get to the Micklin uh, Hotel in Kumasi, you have a little time to relax. Uh, the pool will be the pool will be set for you to relax, and it's a big courtyard. Uh, there's also a few uh, uh, shops uh, in there, a few inside the actual compound itself. The main thing about the Micklin Hotel in Kumasi is its proximity to the culture center and just the full vibrant life in Kumasi, and it's it's also right there by the Kumasi Mall. And the same thing in Accra. It's just a convenient location, including um, access to the mall or anywhere else that you need to move around. All right, so once we, um, you know, we'll have um, dinner at 7 o'clock, and that'll be a nice uh, Ghanaian buffet, and that'll be it for the night. And for those who want to enjoy social nightlife with us, uh, we have one or two places that uh, we usually go in Kamasi. Uh, sometimes it's a shoot pool and just enjoy a social night, but the good thing about it, it's right there by the hotel, so it's just a few minutes uh, drive. So out of the three days in Kumasi, for those who just want to socialize, just come out with us one of the nights, um, especially, you know, the last two nights I'm looking to play pool. 
and you know we usually have a pool tournament jam. Now this time we have set up in Kumasi for the first time. I have two days in Kumasi, so we're gonna split the the city tour and split all the the, the cultural shopping. So day six, uh, Wednesday, November twenty twenty first. All right, so we are gonna be doing Kumasi uh, Kumasi city tour, neighboring craft village including Bonware, the famous uh, kente cloth weaving, uh, and Tanso for kente weaving and adinkra printing and wood carving village, uh, lunch and more shopping at the culture center. And the same thing, we have a 7 p.m. dinner and social gathering group. Uh, day 7, Thursday, November 22nd, uh, Kumasi City Tour and Ashanti Palace slash Military Museum. So early in the morning, we'll just uh, knock out the museum and the Ashanti Palace and um, just give everybody another wonderful opportunity to do shopping at the cultural center and then finish the other part of our city tour. We're going to be driving to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So we can go to the university on either of the uh, travel, either of the uh, tour days, and it's just really based on how things look. We may just have more flexible of schedule on the second tour day to go to the university. And then uh, later on, 7 p.m. dinner, and we're going to enjoy it. It's a night time out um, at, um, in Kamasi where we're going to socialize at. So definitely talk more about what we're going to be specifically doing and where, we go, where we're going to be going at night time when we're actually there in Kamasi or there in Ghana. All right, so family, that's the first uh, seven days. Now uh, day eight, uh, Friday, November 23rd, you can go to Sin Manso and then Elmina slash Cape Coast. Uh, so the uh, same setup, uh, we're going to get everybody's big bags, get the bus packed as early as possible. The main thing uh, of this day, we're going to have tags for those who are going to be staying at the almond tree guest house. And note that uh, not everybody can sit at One Africa. It's 40 of us, so we we'll only have uh, 22 to 24 space at One Africa. So it's based on many different things, and it's nothing personal to anyone, but we have to just accommodate based on the flow of what we need to set up. Uh, some people did have priority settings, and some people just didn't make the cut for One Africa. But nevertheless, everything is there. Everything we're going to be doing is going to be at One Africa. So we're set for this day, dressed in your Pan-African colors of red, black, green, and gold, combination outfit, as we set to travel to a four-hour drive to Sin Mansa, which is an old slave market. And this is um, a location where ancestors took their last bath before they were auctioned off to the local or neighboring dungeons, Elmina or Cape Coast. And once we leave there, it's an hour drive to uh, Elmina to One Africa. So we'll get, uh, everybody's, uh, get everybody's bag off at One Africa, then do the same uh, there at Almond Tree, and then we we'll just enjoy dinner and the nice cultural setup that I'm because I have for us at One Africa. All right, so we're finalizing on the schedule now. Uh, day nine, Saturday, November 24th, Elmina slash Cape Coast. It's a Holocaust our dungeon. I mean, I kept on and keep on thinking about Cape Town when I see Cape Coast and vice versa. Uh, wake up call, morning exercise and uh, breakfast. Uh, dress in your all white outfit for our second ancestral reconnection day. 9 a.m., uh, we look to depart for Cape Coast or Elmina Holocaust Dungeon. And in this case, we usually just go directly to Cape Coast, and Elmina is just an optional. What is ideal is that we don't rush a group of people to one dungeon and rush them to lunch and then rush them to another one and then try to do naming ceremony. So we just choose one and just make it as, you know, make it as detailed as possible. Um, and this is just some years of experience realizing that it's just best to do that versus the rush part of it. If anyone is just open to going to the other dungeons, Elmina, the next day, um, the next day is a free day where, you know, where the schedule is light. Unless you go into the canopy walk with me, uh, you can go to that there as an optional. Nevertheless, uh, this is uh, one of the most emotional part of the journey, and you know, we have everywhere in the itinerary set for the clothing and the color that way. Everyone, as long as they read that itinerary, they clear on what we have set up. But like I always talk about, we definitely go through all these things on a bus. But um, bring anything you may need to celebrate an ancestor or do anything special that you need to do. If you need to cry, scream, it's your time to connect to your ancestors. 
and then you know reconnect to you know the motherland itself. Like Amicus always tell me, no one can tell you how you're gonna feel and what you're gonna go through, and you know none of us can. And it's something very emotional and special for all of us. And uh, later on, once we get back to One Africa, name one ceremony on the beach of One Africa, and Amicus will go to a few other ceremonies and things just to get us connected and get us our focus. But this is out of all the days, this and the, the, the city tour in Accra is the two most special and memorial day that really connect us to our ancestors. And all of the, uh, the nightlife uh, is right here at One Africa, which is not really much of a nightlife. We're just playing music and cards, dominoes, and socializing. And then you have a big ocean front right in front of you. Some people may be out on the rocks in front of the ocean meditating or socializing. But uh, it's, you know, we're, you know, we're winding down. So the next day it sets where we just only have the canopy walk. And for those who are not looking to do that, uh, which I'll only recommend people that are brave soldiers that can can hike up through the forest, cross, cross over the canopy, and not afraid of the lions or whatever they might encounter. Excuse me, there's no lions or anything. I don't want to see anyone. But it's just a, one of those activities where you know we want the best of the folks who are in shape and ready to go. Uh, if someone comes there that they're a little slower than others, I'll ask a tour guide to, or someone else to just monitor the people that are maybe maybe can't move as fast as others. So we you know we we'll never leave anyone behind there because you know, it's what it is. It's a forest to where it can get a little tricky, and we don't want anybody to get lost in the woods. And while you're there uh, for the Sunday, I mean it's you you have the rest of One Africa to to enjoy if you don't want to get back up early in the morning when we leave now for the canopy walk you can relax you can enjoy your breakfast and and just focus and you know enjoy the only day that we have quote unquote free day now the next day day 11 monday november 26 um, we're going to be checking out of one africa and i have i'm working on a setup to bring us to the african diaspora community of garvey town as and we may have another one that we can take uh, everyone by but the presentation will be done the week before at the business conference uh, as far as um, land investment, um, preparation dealing with um, you know, getting yourself organized there, business accounts, um, import, export. I've arranged a lot of different people um, to come, especially people that's more in the audience because we, you know, we don't have enough space and time for presenters, but they're in the general audience to network. and. You know, so it's you know, so all of that is going to be the foundation before we actually get to the actual land site um, and get to some of these other um, investments that we have there. So we have nothing else on the schedule. I'm going to drive two hours to you know, two hours to what you what you call Goma, which is right above Senior Baraku, which we went to last time. So those are the two new locations we have where we're just working on you know, land deals. Uh, Senior Baraku is a 50 acre land deal. Our, our folks at the Moving Forward Investment Group and then the Garvey Town project is a 311 acre project that's uh, been in place for a while, just needs a little momentum and energy, but it's a true co op. Uh, so those are, the, those are things we have. And in the past, we've taken people to Fianca, uh, Benu Village, and you know, one or two other places. But that's the goal is to connect with more and more people that have land sites, secure land. That way, if anyone wants a plot of land, they can be a part of a community and they can deal with people that's going to make sure everything is good for them. So based on all the things that have gone on in Ghana over a period of time, we're trying to just build like a nice, secure, organized group to where we can account and look out for people that are looking to repatriate uh, or just in general live and do business in Ghana. All right, so family, that's your full itinerary uh, there uh, for uh, Ghana, November 2018. So definitely recommend everyone just make sure that they clear on the things that we have listed on our tenor or what we're doing. And if you have any questions, just ask your questions and the better you can go, the clarity of your questions now. The other things that we can focus on there in Ghana and then you have, you have a lot more questions in the country that we'll have, you know, we'll have the tour guide set up to answer all your questions about the country. So family, press uh, star six to unmute yourself questions you have tonight and just give your name and where you're calling from before you do that. Yeah, so everyone, we're coming closer to the one hour mark. Uh, the line is open for questions. Uh, we just went through November 2018 and 2019 itinerary. It's Ghana and South Africa. 
All right, I know everybody didn't call in just to hear me talk about that itinerary. Um, you know what questions you have? Hey, Bomani. Uh, greetings. Hi, uh, this is Edith. <laughs> I'm calling from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Uh, greetings, my sister. So you said for November 19th to join us, at, join us at the business conference? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Do you know, um, I was wondering if, I know we stayed at, um, uh, that's a Micklin, right? Yes, at the Micklin Hotel. Are they going to have some type of uh, dinner that I can get at that time, or? Yes, you can get dinner there. So I'll go ahead and order, um, just order at the restaurant downstairs below the conference room. Okay, then I probably need to order before come in or something. Okay. Uh, yes, um, you may have to do that before. You, you'd have to give them at least an hour if I were to get it prepared. Okay. Because also they're working on our, our dinner buffet, which is a big order. Right. Okay. I will do that. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you all. I'm leaving. Um, I'm leaving for Ghana next Sunday. So. Well, perfect. Um, you want to share with anyone your experience? It's the third time you've been to Ghana, right? Um, and now you have your land and. Actually, this is gonna be. Oh my gosh! I think this might be my fifth time. I think. I went earlier this year. <laughs> I was there in, in March to April. And, you know, to everyone, I did go on the tour with Bomani in uh, October of 2016. And I started the process in purchasing my land. I have uh, completed the process. And now I am in the process of starting to build and, um, you know, put up a fence and do things like that, just the beginning stages. I have my house plan and everything. So, you know, my visit this time is to secure a place to stay when I'm going back and forth um, while I'm overseeing the building of my home. And that's perfect, and the stages to it, so. Yes. Yeah, just got to, this is the the process I connect everyone to is the, the beginning of the, that process, and the, you know, building full of you know, some good people from, you know, from the African continent and from the African diaspora that's ready to connect and, you know, connect and make a strong repatriation movement. Great. Thank you. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to seeing you. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent, Edith. Good talking to you again. You take care. Okay. You too. All right. Excellent. So family, that's uh, Edith Vanderpool. She connected with us in Ghana in that year, October 2016. I think that was my last October journey. And uh, her and Kojo, they were two of the few that got land and you know, Kojo's already built his business, um, took our group there last year to Senior Barracool. Um, and that's that's the the, the process. Uh, it's you know it's a lot to process and think about. But when we take you to all the steps and get you to the country, you know if you're open to that li life and that world, you know we do our best to connect you. And then you know naturally you can build your own connections, and we just you know look out for each other. So family, uh, we're coming up on a one hour mark. I uh, don't want to stretch this call too long. Um, the main thing that uh, Go, went over is just the full itineraries, and that's because that's the most important thing on the tour. But when we clear an itinerary, what's included, what we're doing, that way you can wager wager what you feel the value of the tour is based on what the itinerary is. Because anyone can say that they're taking you to Africa, they're taking you to somewhere, but unless you have a clear cut itinerary, you won't be able to weigh how things is. But these itineraries are set where we include as much as possible and try to have as much staff and crew around. And this is really just big on this networking because we have so much of us even in America here and live in different parts of the states and doing different things. And we're, we're the only people that's not backed by in our nation. That different Asian groups are coming in backed by a full country. And naturally, different uh, European groups backed by the European Union and their folks in their specific country. And when it comes to black people from the Caribbean, black people from America, we're only backed by us, so we we have to be our own governance and put our resources together and do whatever we feel like we need to do in Africa or even here in America. But nevertheless, uh, so family, appreciate everyone's energy. That's our tour information. So the other things that we have beyond the details on the website is just the YouTube and the Facebook page. Now as I begin to travel to other countries, uh, our goal is to just do 
the best videos we can as far as on the sites, um, interviewing of people traveling with us, local people, and kind of mix it up, business investment as much as possible, and just have that documented to share. That way more and more people can just be open to the possibilities of you know, that world that we've been working on building, uh, getting more of us to live and do business in Africa. So the YouTube page uh, is youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007. And once you get to the YouTube page, uh, you can just click on subscribe if you want to get the posts of the future videos. But beyond that, uh, we Upload is just where the list of all the videos are, and then have a bunch of playlists. So you can click on playlists, or you can scroll down and see the main playlist. Um, and since may, most of what I've done over the last uh, 12 years is the Ghana tour, that's what you're going to really see. And you are going to see videos in Ethiopia, Togo, Benin, and also uh, Brazil. So those are the other countries I've been to. Outside that epic 12-year uh, span of 2006 to 2018 to Ghana, most important, uh, interesting um, link we have is the, the conference call and interview. So every time we do a conference call, I, our interview are edited and uploaded to that uh, playlist on YouTube. All right, so it's um, the YouTube channel is set for us a lot of documentation. Now, uh, next thing we have is uh, Facebook, and Facebook is where I have all of the group, um, the group pages, South Africa. Ghana May, Ghana November, and not everybody's on Facebook and not everybody's open for the group page, but I just try my best to add people into all the different, um, based on the tours they go into, or you can just add yourself and put information on those pages also. And then anything else I have is like Twitter and Instagram, and I don't do much of those other than the basic posts. Uh, but beyond that, um, I'm available seven days a week from morning to night to talk or communicate with you about tours, business, technology, any of those things. That's what I do all day, every day. So family, um, open things up for last minute questions, and then after this, I'm going to close. So we got one more minute. Uh, if anybody have any last minute questions. All right, so family, everyone, uh, good night. Enjoy your night. And um, I'll see you on the journey to Ghana. At the airport November 16th or 17th and beyond today. Only thing else I have is uh, where I'll just try to text on the, on the phone. And then for those who are in the WhatsApp group, um, whatever message I have to send, I'll send it to that group. And if you're not in the WhatsApp group um, and you don't know how to get access to it, just reach out to me. I did send text messages and tell everyone to join the group. When we travel in November 16th and 17th, I'll have a way to communicate with you because this phone is a U.S.-based phone, so the phone won't work, but everything else will work. And um, for those who are traveling to Amsterdam, once you get to Amsterdam, you can connect to the free Amsterdam Internet, and that's how you can just send a message on WhatsApp, say, hey, um, this came in from this city, and I'm here, and so on. Anyway, family, uh, good connecting with everyone. I'm going to unmute, and then we're going to connect next time. Good night. All right, good night. Good night. <laughs> yes, Edna and Sharon. <laughs> good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.